Okay, this session is now being recorded. And thank you again for joining our webinar today. Uh, the presenters are myself. Uh, let me forward that slide. Uh, I'm Hunter Williams with Little Green Light. I'm the VP of Mar uh, Product Marketing, which means that I work a lot on developing the product and helping people understand how the product can be beneficial. And we have Caleb Porsche. He's with Landscape. He was the creator of Landscape. Uh, I'll let him introduce himself as well. Uh, Hi, everybody. Caleb. Thanks for joining us today. Great. Thanks. Um, and uh, we're really excited to be presenting with Caleb. He's been a, a strong advocate for working together with Little Green Light, and he actually encouraged us to open up a part of our software so that he could write his application and connect with us and have data flow back and forth. Uh, that's been going on for a couple of years now, so we're really excited about that. Uh, we're also uh, going to be exhibiting uh, next to Caleb at the upcoming Land Trust Rally Conference, the annual Land Trust Conference. That's in North Carolina in October, so we're glad to be, uh, we'll be neighbors with Caleb there. Uh, our agenda, uh, we're going to do an introduction of Little Green Light for those of you who are not yet familiar with Little Green Light. And we're going to do an introduction of Landscape. Caleb will do that uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Landscape. And then Caleb will talk about how they integrate. And we will have time for Q&A. Um, I will present the, the first part about Little Green Light. And if questions come in about Little Green Light, I'll answer uh, some of those right at the end of my section and then uh, at the end we'll have a general uh, q a for any additional questions you have about landscape and the integration so with that i'm going to jump into the little green light portion uh, if you are already a little green light customer uh, this may be a bit of review for you but please hang tight um, there may be some things that are new uh, and then i know you're going to want to hear the the part about landscape coming up in just about 12 to 15 minutes. So that'll be coming right up. All right, uh, David posted a question about being able to hear everything. Um, so I haven't seen other issues with that. Hopefully that's okay. Uh, there are a couple of comments about not being able to hear. Uh, but I will wait to see if either Timmy or Caleb. Okay, Caleb said he can hear me. So I'm going to continue. Hopefully we can sort out what's happening with the other uh, folks with the audio issues. All right, I'm going to jump into my demo. Uh, you should be seeing my screen. I have my demo account called Center House. Uh, this is a little green light account. And most accounts look very similar. Uh, you do have some customization you can do around color. Uh, you can upload your logo and some things like that, but a lot of what you see on my screen would be similar to what you would see on your own screen. Uh, we start here on the home page. This is our dashboard where you can get a good handle about all the activities and things that are happening in your account, uh, such as in the upper right corner, you can see fundraising totals for the current year. I could toggle back and look at my fundraising totals for previous years. I can see the current month. Uh, top campaigns right below that, activities that are happening. Uh, if I have any goals assigned to me, I can look at those tasks, things like that. Um, so it's like a dashboard where you can see kind of high level activity that's happening in your account. But I'm going to, for the, we don't have all that much time, so I'm going to jump pretty quickly into the uh, meat and potatoes of the software. And that would be our constituents area and our giving area, the fundraising tab. Uh, constituents are really the core of everything in your little green light account. Everything revolves around the individuals and organizations that are listed in your account. Uh, when you go to the constituents tab, it opens up to your entire uh, account. So in our case, we have exactly 600 records, constituent records in our account. And that's a combination of individuals and organization records. Uh, every single record in Little Green Light is one of those two types of records. 
and they operate pretty similarly. There's not a lot of difference, uh, but it's important if you're collecting funds from an entity, it's important that you understand if if that's an individual making the donation or is it an organization making the donation. So you can uh, uh, recognize the appropriate entity in your tax acknowledgement letters. Uh, I'm going to jump right into a record here so we can see uh, the kind of the details of what's in a constituent record. Uh, before I click into the record itself, you can see a high-level summary on this search result here. Uh, so this is the first of our, well, we showed 25 on a single page, but you can click through to the next pages to see uh, additional results. But our search results show a an abbreviated view of the record with the contact name and the primary contact information, any relationships that they might have to other records, and then a bit of information about them in terms of key categories of information, and then their giving history. If I click into the record, I see everything there is to know about our interactions and the information we have about this constituent. In the top left here, I see all the name information. I can see if they are connected to a spouse or partner record, or if they have other relationships, like in this case, a child record. In the upper right, I see giving history, first, latest, largest gift, and then by gift type. And then here we have a, a total value calculated. Uh, so that's kind of a handy way to see the sum of their giving value plus uh, soft credits or matching credits that, that you're attributing to that record. So it's kind of their philanthropic value to you as an organization. Uh, you see the contact information. You can store as many phone numbers, email addresses, mailing addresses as you want. You can designate which of those is, are the preferred. So those would be the ones pulled into a mailing uh, or an email. Uh, we pull the preferred email address for that and the preferred mailing address for your mailings. On the left-hand side, you can see the categories. These are like the key ways that we track information about constituents. Uh, groups is a, a system category. Every account starts with, uh, with groups as well as contact types. But you can also add your own custom categories. Uh, volunteer interest is an example of a, of a custom category. Uh, if I click add, it'll show me the, the various values that I have. So in this case, I can say that Sally's interested in uh, volunteering or she has skills around training. So we might tap into her for that. Uh, you can see related information. Uh, if you are a membership organization, or if you use memberships to track things like uh, subscriptions, you know, if people have kind of an annual payment to you, annual fee payment, you could track that through memberships. Track the status. Uh, we automatically will tell you if they're an active member or a former member based on the start and end dates of their memberships. So if they have an end date that's in the future, like this one, September 2020, uh, this person will be marked as an active member because they have not yet expired. And then you can use that information to pull up a list of people that you might want to send a reminder email to or a reminder mailing to to let them know that their membership is coming due. And I'm going to show the bottom part of the constituent page here. This is an area we call the related activity section. And this is a complete history of all of your interactions with the constituent. Uh, you can see we have gift records at the top here. We have an event that they RSVP to. Uh, we have a note here uh, that they joined our mailing list. Another gift. So it's a, it's a great way to see all of the history that you have with a particular constituent. Um, you could imagine if you're a, a new uh, fundraiser or development person and you're coming into an organization, how nice it would be to be able to pull up a, a history like that and get to know your donors and, and prospective donors. All right, so that's kind of a quick view of the, the detailed 
constituent page. We're going to scroll back to the top now and look at some of the more summary type of information. And especially looking on the left here under the filter section. Uh, this is a, you can see in the parentheses, a count of how many constituents have these different attributes. Uh, some of these attributes are generated by our system automatically, uh, like these giving status uh, values are calculated based on the gift history that we see in each record. Uh, so if you are an active donor, that means in our, by default, it means you've had a gift within the last 18 months, but as an administrator in your account, you can edit that and change the time frame. If you want to have that be 12 months or 24 months, you can edit that. Um, so active lapsed means they have a gift, but it's more than 18 months old. So you can quickly see a, uh, at a glance, kind of a count by these different values. I was, mem I was mentioning memberships, active and former. You can also have levels of membership. So in our case, we just have household and individual memberships, but you can have a gold, silver, bronze type membership or one year, two year, whatever various tiers you designate. Uh, this account is integrated with Constant Contact. Uh, we are integrated, uh, you can integrate with either Constant Contact or MailChimp. Both are excellent email marketing platforms. And uh, we do have the ability to send emails from Little Greenlight itself, but they're mainly, our email system is mainly meant for things like acknowledgement letters, where you're following up on a particular action that the donor took. If you're interested in doing broad scale marketing campaigns um, or managing a mailing, like a newsletter mailing list, uh, we're recommending Constant Contact or MailChimp for that. And you can integrate Little Green Light with those. And the integration allows you to manage uh, who's on which mailing list. So in Constant Contact, you can create as many lists as you want. Um, you'd actually create those in Little Green Light and, and they automatically get, get created in your Constant Contact account. And then from Little Green Light, you can manage who's on those mailing lists. Uh, I mentioned group when we were looking at Sally's detailed record. Um, this is a great way to track the primary way that someone is connected to your organization. So you might track board members here, board alum, or if there are other key ways that you might want to designate people. Um, so it's really highly customizable in terms of how you want to designate uh, what people, how they're connected to you. Uh, I mentioned a custom category for volunteer interest. And at this point, I'm going to jump over and show you how you manage these filters and these categories. And we're going to create a new custom category. Um, we're going to do that around kind of the land donor uh, field. Now, that, that's something that uh, landscape is, is going to do in, in much deeper ways than what you can do in Little Green Light. Uh, but just to show you as an example how you can create a category in Little Green Light and set your own values for that. I jumped over to our setting settings menu items area, which is where you control a lot of the drop down lists. Um, constituent categories, that's the one we're going to look at. But it's also where you would go to manage your membership levels your relationships that you set um, between constituents, uh, gift menu items like gift type, or sorry, gift category, uh, payment type, you can manage there. So lots of different areas where you manage the drop-down lists in Little Green Light. Uh, we're going to create a new category, and it's uh, land, I'll call it land donation status. And we're going to make this a single select. Uh, this is going to be kind of like a moves management type of use where we're tracking the status of someone um, who may be a prospect or maybe has made a land donation. Uh, so if I jump down to that section here, I can add values. And I'll add values of prospect 
uh, in progress, active, and former. And I hit save, and so we, we create um, these values. I might reorder those values to put them in kind of more chronological order. So prospect in progress, active and former, and finish sorting. And now when I go back to my constituent tab, uh, I'll see those on the filter on the left-hand side. Uh, let me, I'm gonna minimize these so we can see more of the left-hand side at a time. Um, so we have this land donation status. Right now, nobody has those assigned yet, but with Sally, for instance, if I wanna edit that category, actually, I'm gonna make one other edit I meant to do uh, while I was here. And that is customize the order and display. And what I'm gonna do is move this as high up as I can to the top. And I'm gonna add this show in search checkbox. And now when I go back to my constituent tab, uh, it's moved up higher, so it's not as hard to find. And it's also showing on the right-hand side here under in the search, the kind of miniature search result. So if I click edit categories, I might mark Sally as a prospect. And if I refresh my screen, my filters now show that I have one prospect for that. So just I very quickly wanted to demonstrate how you can create a custom category and how you can then add values and mark constituents uh, with that value. Okay, we're gonna move on to the fundraising tab. This is kind of the, if uh, constituents is the meat, this is the potatoes of, of the software. Uh, fundraising is where you can go to see all of the gift history, uh, kind of regardless of, it, it's not organized by donor so much as it is just raw gift information. So if I, if I wanted to see every last gift in my account, no matter what type it is, I can change the date range to all dates and hit search. And I can see that in my account, I have 1,657 gift entries. Uh, and on the left, I can see how those break down by gift type. So gift is a monetary gift, in kind of goods and services. Other income is payment for fees, uh, specifically non-charitable payments. Pledge, you can track installments on those pledges. And then related gifts are things that you assign to a donor, uh, even though they weren't the ones that made the original, the actual monetary gift, but you're soft crediting them uh, because perhaps they're a spouse to the donor, or if it's a foundation, maybe they're the philanthropist behind the foundation. Uh, in honor of, in memory of, those are the honorees or the deceased for which the gift was made in honor of or in memory of. And then matching would be in a case where you're crediting an employee for a matching gift that came from the employer. So these are all the different gift types that you can track in Little Green Light. <clears throat> and you can search and filter by any of those. Uh, you can also change your view. And the views are really nice ways to see the giving in a different uh, roll up. So right now it's just literally the raw gift entries. But if I want to roll them up and see a more summary type of view, uh, one option is to look by constituent. So I, I am able to sum up the giving by constituent this way. So now we're rolling it up and it's sorted high to low by giving amount. So I can see my uh, donors in terms of lifetime giving. I can combine this with a date range. So if I want to see just uh, three fiscal years ago. Uh, actually, let me remember how to set that three fiscal years ago. I think I just typed that in like that. I think if I search now, it'll change my date range. So just in the past three fiscal years, I can see the giving totals uh, that way. Um, I can also look at views by fund and category. 
campaign and fund, all kinds of different ways to combine and roll up your giving information. So I can see kind of biannual giving and then by the fund within annual giving. Uh, in Little Green Light, you can track, if I, if I go to look at adding a gift, uh, you can see different ways that you can track gifts by campaign, uh, by fund, which means if, they, if the donor designates the gift to go towards a particular purpose, you can use fund to designate that. Uh, appeal and event is what you did to generate the gift and then team member if you have a solicitor who is responsible for managing a particular gift uh, but there is an area in fundraising that i wanted to jump to which has to do with major gift tracking and that's something that a lot of land trusts are interested in and that's our goals area Goals is for tracking a particular ask, could be a major gift ask or a grant proposal. Uh, if I go here, it shows that we have just one goal at the moment. And so this goal is a $1,000 ask. Uh, we put the projection a little below that. The projection we have is 500 to 750. You can use that to help with cash flow analysis. And then the status is open. Uh, this is kind of like moves management where I can track through um, a series of statuses and you can customize those statuses to, to be what you want. Often I see cultivating would be a status, um, ask made would be a good status to add in there. You can assign the goal to a particular owner. Uh, so I can see all of Virginia's goals here. And you can give your goal a category. So I'm uh, I'm running a little bit long here, but I wanted to show the the goals area. Uh, we didn't really get into mailings, but in Little Green Light you can do mailings either through email or physical mail, and you generally do that by managing templates, where you set up templates. Uh, I have an example of a template here, so you can use merge fields and pull in data from the account and generate a merged letter that you use to send out to a large number of constituents. And then the last thing I'm going to mention, and then I'll hand it off to Caleb, is uh, the forms area. Forms is a really powerful component of your Little Green Light account. You can use it to set up donation forms or event registration forms or mailing list forms, all kinds of purpose uh, uses for forms. Uh, this is a very simple donation form example, uh, but you can really customize these uh, to collect whatever information you're, you're looking to collect. Uh, when you go to edit your form, you can add fields and you can add multiple fields. So you can add, I mean, we do recommend keeping your form fairly simple because they, they will be completed more often that way, but uh, really, the sky's the limit in terms of what you do with your form. And then each form you can map to your Little Green Light account. So you tell Little Green Light how you want that data to be brought into Little Green Light. You go through a step here where you map the fields. And we built both the form service and the Little Green Light account. So we recognize all the standard fields and they will automatically map. Um, and then that way your data can come right into your little green light account. Uh, there's an option here that says require review before saving. That gives you the chance to uh, put your new submissions into a review queue so you can take a look at them before they go all the way into your little green light account. Okay, well, thank you for uh, joining that, that part of this session. I, I wanna turn this over to Caleb. I know there are a lot of little green light customers on the call and. Sorry if that was a lot of review there, but let me uh, switch the presenter over to Caleb here. One second. And Timmy did uh, comment that there were no questions so far, so I'm going to skip my uh, my Q and A section. We can always come back to questions later for a little green light. Okay, so I just switched that to Caleb. 
Okay, can everybody see my screen? It says conservation dashboard. I can, yep. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. Thanks, Hunter. Um, so thanks everybody for being on the call. I'm gonna give you a very general quick overview of what landscape does, and then I'll spend time after that talking about specifically how it integrates uh, with Little Greenlight and how that integration um, is really a powerful thing uh, for land trust. So what you're looking at here is the conservation dashboard. This is the first thing you'll see when you sign into Landscape. So Landscape is web-based software, and it's meant specifically for managing your land acquisition and stewardship projects. And the purpose of the dashboard is to give everyone in the organization a quick place where they can all go and get answers to the fundamental questions about your conservation program in a single place without having to do a lot of complicated querying and reporting. And so it's made up of these different uh, widgets of data. Um, each one shows a little different slice of, of your data. Um, this one is conservation success. So it will tell you how many acquisitions you've done in total, how many this year, how many acres you've conserved in total, and again this year. You can define your own metrics that you wanna measure. Um, so for example, acres of some habitat type or miles of shoreline or whatever it may be. You can define those things uh, as metrics that will all also then bubble up here onto the dashboard. Uh, this one over here is showing you active acquisitions by some group right now, that stage. So you can define different stages for your acquisitions. You'll see how many are in that stage, how many acres that represents. Uh, this one is showing you your stewardship obligations. So um, how many acres of easements you've got to monitor yet this year, how much fee simple land. This is a graph showing you how many uh, acres you've acquired over time or how many properties you've acquired uh, over time. And then this one is showing you a, a map uh, so you can get an overview of both your active and completed uh, projects uh, geographically. When I click on these, they're going to give me um, a, uh, a blurb about the um, property and a link here that takes me directly into uh, the details of that property. If I zoom in here far enough, you'll see that these are actually uh, polygons on the map. So you can see uh, specifically uh, the area that's being encompassed by that um, property. So the dashboard is customizable. You can take widgets and move them around. You can change their settings. There's a menu here where you can add other widgets. And when you make those changes, you're only changing your view of the dashboard. You're not modifying anybody else's view. So everybody can have the most pertinent uh, information on their dashboard uh, for them. Um, I'm gonna go over here now to the conservation tab. And the conservation tab is going to be basically the nerve center of your um, data. This is where you're going to do any querying or reporting type functions. It's made up of these different views. There are some built-in views, uh, but really the power is when you create your own views. And so you can have views for anything. Um, so for example, if you want a view that shows you your easements to monitor, you can create that list. And it will show you uh, in a list form all the easements that you have to monitor. Uh, you can add different columns uh, that you want. You can have a list of current landowners. And again, it will give you the properties that they're associated with and then their contact information. Um, if I want, uh, I can do geographic results as well. So here's um, a list of properties in a particular county. If I open up the edit bar for that, you can see that the query is built up of just different rows of criteria where you just pick a field and then a value. I can view it as a table or I can also view it as a map. So in this case, if I wanted to see where all those properties are, I can uh, view my results on the map. So these little blue blocks here, when I click on them, uh, it will give me the column details uh, over here on the right-hand side for each of those. Um, also back in, in the list here, there's a bunch of different things I can do. If I wanna export these out in various ways, uh, I can do that. So if I just make a couple selections here, go over to the actions menu over here on the right hand side and click export. I can either output these to a spreadsheet, they'll look like what the table looks like back here, or I can create report templates. Uh, and these would be um, for doing more um, nicer looking printed reports or uh, PDF reports that you might be sharing with uh, the board or a committee. And so you can um, customize these to have a look and feel uh, however you want. You can choose what fields are being um, shown in the final output. So this one's just an acquisition summary that you might share with the board. It's talking about its approval status, capital funding, transaction costs. All the reports have access to map data and photos as well. 
and then here it's just going on to the next one as well. So again, I can print this out, I can save it to PDF. These report templates are fully customizable. You have a library of report templates uh, that you have access to over here on the left. You can create your own. If I click into one of these, you can see that it's made up of uh, different blocks that you can then click on and customize. You can change fonts. You can change, again, the fields that are there um, and a bunch of other attributes uh, related to how that report is going to be displayed and what data is going to uh, display in that report. So uh, the easiest way to find things in landscape, though, is just to search. So I've got a global search here. So if I search for Fred, it's going to show me all the different places where Fred shows up uh, in the database. Uh, and so you can see it found it in a bunch of different categories. Uh, sorry, just making sure everybody's synced back up and can see this. Okay, and so I'm going to jump into property acquisition. Um, to start talking about the details of the data that's in here. So there's two main categories of data. There's property acquisition and then there's stewardship. And property acquisition is where you're going to record all the details about the um, uh, diligence steps and the financials related to acquiring a property interest on, on a piece of land. So it has a bunch of fields here for status and stage and um, categories. So you can tag it with different categories which would make it easier to uh, query these results out later. You can upload actual documentation. So these are PDF documents or, or whatever type of format you actually want to work with. Uh, and so they're easily accessible just by clicking on them. You can have that digital document uh, available to you uh, right there with just a simple click. You also have notes uh, and you can also track geography over here related to that property. On the diligence tab, there's a bunch of stuff uh, related to approvals, site assessments, surveys, title work. I'm not going to go through the details of each one, but when you click on it, there's another set of details that you can edit. And every one is going to have a set of documents that you can upload and attach as well. So this board of directors approval, if I wanted the actual minutes from the meeting uh, or a resolution, I could attach that uh, document to that uh, approval record. And so every time I look at that approval, it's easy enough just to see the uh, document that goes with it. So like I said, there's a bunch of other categories, surveys, title work. Uh, if I go to the financials page, um, I've got things like the purchase price, the appraised value, donation related information and documents, where the money came from, appraisals, uh, purchase agreements, transaction costs. Uh, and all these places have digital documents that can be attached as well. And so if I go to the documents and contacts tab, I have a really nice searchable list of all the documents that have been attached to this property acquisition. And so if I'm looking for something specific, I can just go in here and type it into the search bar. So if I type in deed, it will filter that list and show me uh, that deed document. Or if I'm looking for the 8283 form, I can type in 8283 and it will search for it and it will be ready for me uh, there just to click on and then it will open up that, that document for me. So a real easy way to find all the documents that are attached to a particular property. Also on here, and I'll come back to these things, is your contact information for your, uh, your landowners, uh, your service providers, like your appraiser, your surveyor, your title company, and then all the communications you've had with those folks are here as well. Jumping over to the stewardship side of things. So the stewardship record is basically everything that you've done on the property since you uh, acquired it. Um, so it has a nice map over here that can be used for things like baseline photo points. So if I click on these photos, I can see a description and when they were taken, who took them, uh, and, and information like that. Um, I can also have areas on the map that are defined uh, as certain zones. So if there's a residential area or an ag zone, I can have those defined on that map. Um, over here on the monitoring tab is going to give me my chronological list of monitoring visits. Uh, as I hover over these, you'll see the map, hopefully you'll see on the right hand side, uh, the map is going to update and show me the geography uh, from that particular visit. So it's easy for me to see uh, at a glance where I was last year and where I might need to go uh, this year. If I click into the details of a monitoring visit, again, I have its geography uh, over on the right hand side, the path I walked, photos that I took uh, in the field along with their descriptions. I've got details about landowner contact, when the visit was actually done and how. 
who was there and what their roles were uh, on the visit. Um, the monitoring objectives tab is your form data. So you can create custom form data uh, for any of your properties. Uh, each one could be unique if you wanted it to be. But basically you have multiple choice questions, uh, short answer, whatever you need, um, where you're gonna ask these questions while you're out doing your uh, monitoring visit. And you can fill in that data there. Um, you can generate your report using that uh, same report template structure that I showed you earlier, right from here. So if I wanna generate the visit report from here, I can just pick it from a list. It will go ahead and um, uh, generate that report, filling in all those details for me, has those answers to my questions. It has access to the map data, uh, all the photos that I took. And then if I want, I can also do a digital signature. So I can just go ahead and generate that report, print it, PDF it, whatever I might need to do and then I'm, I'm done with the report for that year. If I want, I could also generate a landowner letter. So maybe I'm gonna send a copy of the report to the landowner. I've got another template that would allow me to do that. There's multiple landowners on this property. So that's why I generated two different uh, letters. But if you look at the print preview for that, you'll see that these are each on a different page. I could print them out, sign them, or I could print them on the letterhead if that's more appropriate. So an easy way to get your monitoring visits done. I'm not really monitoring the questions, but I did see one come by about uh, mobile app, uh, I think. And the answer is yes, that um, there's a landscape mobile app that works on both iOS and Android, that you can collect all this data in the field, including the pictures, the geography, answer these form questions. You can do all that in the field, online or offline, um, and come back into the office, have it synced up, and uh, all your data will already be here. And if you need to make tweaks to it, then you can just use the website to tweak it. Otherwise, it's a very quick and efficient way of collecting uh, all that data. Um, just to finish up quickly through stewardship here, you've also got land management. Uh, so you've got a list of all your land management activities, issues tracking. Uh, so issues have um, geography as well as whether they've been resolved, different types and severities. Uh, notes that you've uh, uh, taken over time regarding that issue. Rights and approvals, so tracking whether the landowner has exercised certain rights or whether they've requested approvals for certain things and you've, and you've either approved it or denied it. Management plans and uses, leases and contracts, so if you have mineral leases or forest leases or ag leases, uh, you can track those, who the tenants are, where it is on the, on the land, uh, et cetera. So that's sort of a very quick uh, overview, uh, very fast overview of landscape and, and what it does. So now I'm going to talk specifically about how it integrates uh, with Little Greenlight and how that can save you a ton of time. And so I'm going to take a pretty um, common example of, uh, in, of processing inquiries. So a landowner calls you up and says they're interested in conserving their land. How are you going to track that in landscape and how are you going to track that person's data in a little green light, because you're probably going to want them in there as well. And so the first thing I'm going to do is go over here to my little green light account, and I'm going to um, do, uh, I'm going to change a menu item. I'm not going to do the complicated one that Hunter showed you. I'm just going to do a quick one. I'm going to um, just add a group for uh, maybe landowner prospect. And this is going to be the group that I want to put new inquiries uh, into. So now that group is there. So when I go into lands landscape, let's say uh, Jill Jones uh, gives me a call and wants to conserve her property. So what I'm gonna do is start a new tract because the tract represents the actual land. I'm gonna give it a, a reasonable name. I'm gonna call it maybe Jill Jones Ranch or something like that. Uh, if she gave me enough information about where it is, uh, I can either import uh, a map from uh, ArcGIS, or I can just draw a map quickly uh, here. So say that's her, her piece of land. If I click update locations, it will actually go uh, to some public web services and get as much data about that area as it can. So it told me its size, what state it's in, city, PLSS, uh, congressional districts information, et cetera. Um, so that's pretty handy. But now I'm gonna go over to the people tab and I'm gonna add Jill uh, here as a person. She's an interest holder, right? Because she owns the fee simple interest on that land. So I'm gonna add her as a fee simple land owner. I'm just gonna 
put those to yes. And then I've got this contact field down here and it's a search. So I'm integrated with Little Green Light, which means that if I do a search for Jill Jones, uh, I can check to make sure she's not already in there before I go ahead and add a new uh, contact. So I don't want to create duplicates if I don't have to, right? So um, I search for Jones and I don't see anybody that looks like Jill Jones. So I'm going to assume that Jill Jones isn't already in the database. So I'm going to click add new. I'm going to fill in some contact information here. Uh, I'm going to have it automatically fill in these address C and salutation fields. And then I'm going to add a phone number. So the categories that you see here for the types of phone numbers and addresses, those are all coming from Little Green Light. Uh, so these are going to be the same choices you have when you're looking at it in Little Green Light. So if I go to, I'm going to make this her home phone number. It's just going to be easy. So now I've got her contact information, her phone number, all of it that I happen to have right now. I'm going to click Save. And now I've got Jill Jones as a, a landowner on this particular piece of property. And so right now there's magic happening in the background. Uh, Landscape is pushing that new contact uh, over to Little Green Light. And if I've talked long enough and the internet's been fast enough, if I come over here and I do a search for Jill Jones, there she is in the contact uh, search or constituent search results. Jill Jones is there along with the phone number uh, that I added for her. So now if I come back in here, maybe there are other details that I want to add about her. So um, if I come back in here, now that she's been synchronized, I can see that I can see the little green light categories over here on the right that are associated or that are available. Um, so I have groups and right now it's set to none. If I click on that, I can drop down uh, the group drop down and you can see that landowner prospect is an available group. So I'm going to go ahead and choose landowner prospect. So she's in that group. And if I want to add an email address uh, for her, I could do that while I'm here. And maybe a quick address as well, her home address. I think she was in Iowa. Oops, give us some numbers. Too many. All right, so now she's got uh, an address, um, an email, and then I also put her in the landowner group. And so now if there's been enough time, I'm gonna switch back over to Little Greenlight. And if I refresh this screen, assuming again, everything's gone well, you'll see now that she is in fact in the landowner prospect group. Um, and her address and phone number and email are all uh, in here as well. So that's uh, that's great. That's happening in the background automatically. So if I change her name information, add other phone numbers or email addresses, all those things are going to get pushed over to Little Green Light uh, right away. The other thing that's synchronized are communications. So if I wanted to record the fact that she called uh, me on a certain date, so Jill called, uh, I'll say to conserve her land. I can add that communication here. And that communication is going to show up in Little Green Light as a contact report as well. So again, if I've given it enough time and I refresh, you can see that last contact report came in. So if I actually look at her uh, constituent record, you'll see that call to Jill has been recorded in LGL for me automatically. So that all happens more or less uh, immediately when you're making those changes from landscape. If you're making the changes instead from little green light, then uh, you either have to wait because it only synchronizes once a day um, in that direction uh, and it happens early in the morning. If there's something that you can't live without um, right away, you can force the synchronization. So um, let's say I wanted to um, add, or let's say I added another uh, email address uh, for her here in Little Green Light. Now, doing that right now isn't, if I go back and refresh landscape, it's not going to show up. Um, so, uh, what I have to do if I want to see that in landscape right away is uh, go over to settings and under the integrations tab, 
all my in available integrations are here. Little green light is down here. You can see when it was last successfully synced. And I can click sync now. And um, this can take a little time, so it might be boring. I might not wait for it to, um, uh, to do it. Maybe it will take, uh, maybe it'll be quick this time. But basically now what it's gonna do is pull all the changes that have occurred since the last time it synchronized uh, from Little Green Light into the landscape account. And again, this is something that happens automatically once a day uh, in the wee hours of the morning. It looks like it's gonna take a little bit longer than I wanted it to right now. Uh, I'm gonna give it one more second, otherwise it's gonna be too boring. Oh, there it goes. There it did it. Okay, and so it says, it successfully synchronized one contact from LGL if I, and one communicated Jim's record. If I want to see those details, I can click that. I can see that Jill Jones's uh, contact record was updated. So that all seems great. So now if I go back and do a search for Jill, I should see that second email address and I do in fact. So now it's there. So now everybody is, is uh, synchronized again and happy. Um, so that's, that's it. That's basically the, the synchronization portion uh, of how the two uh, integrate. Hunter, I don't know if you want to open it up for questions now or, or what you're thinking. Yeah, uh, that sounds great. Thank you, Caleb. That was a great overview, great description. Um, there were a couple of questions that came in for you, um, I think. Uh, Scott answered one question about importing, which was really helpful, which is great. Um, that was about little green light, but there was one about images, uh, size of images from Lucy. Is there a limit to how many, oh, this is documents. Is there a limit to how many documents we can upload into landscape? There's no practical limit. Um, the subscription itself comes with a hundred gigabytes of storage. And if you need more than that, you can buy it in blocks of 100 gigabytes for a small monthly fee. Um, nobody's had to do that yet out of the 80 plus customers of Landscape. So, and the, and the biggest reason for that, just as a side note, is that all the images that get uploaded into the Landscape are resized uh, to be um, uh, much smaller than they would normally be coming right off your camera. Um, so that, that ends up reducing the space taken up on the server quite a bit. Oh, that answered the next question from uh, Suzanne was, do the photos automatically reduce in size or do we have to reduce them before loading? So I think you said you automatically reduce them as they come in. Yep. Okay, great. You answered the one about app. Um, Elizabeth asked about the recording. The, the recording will be made available uh, maybe later today or certainly by tomorrow morning. So we will get that out to everybody. Um, let's see, there is an uh, LGL question. Frank asked, is LGL's import tool compatible with Donor Perfect? Um, I, I wouldn't say, um, no, not directly compatible, but all of the importing that happens into Little Green Light needs to come from either an Excel file or a CSV, comma, separated value spreadsheet type file. So no matter what system you're in, it has to be exported and saved into a spreadsheet format first and then imported. And we have quite a bit of help documentation and we can certainly help you with any questions you have through the support team as well um, about that. Otherwise the question uh, I will are... say also that, uh, sorry, sorry, Hunter. Yeah, so I just wanted to also say that anybody, anyone out there who is a current uh, little green light customer, but not a, a landscape customer, um, little green light customers do get $150 off their first year of subscription for landscape. So there's another incentive for you. I think that's true in reverse as well, Caleb. Uh, landscape customers can use the promo code landscape and we'll also get a discount that way coming into little green light. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there were any questions we missed. But we'll uh, take a look at the queue if anyone has any questions for either Caleb about Little uh, Landscape or for me about Little Green Light. We're happy to answer those in the in the minutes that we have left. Ah, uh, 
Andrea, are you asking for both softwares or one in particular, Landscape or Little Green Light, in terms of pricing? Both. Okay. Uh, Caleb, why don't you start and then I'll take over as presenter and I'll show our pricing page. Sure. Yeah, so I'll do that as well. So, um, Landscape pricing scales by the number of properties, essentially. Um, and so you can see that these are the um, categories. This is the annual price for the base subscription. And if you want to add the mobile app connector to that, that's an additional cost on top of the base subscription. But that subscription covers any number of users uh, for both the website and the mobile app. And I will pass it to you, Hunter. All right. I think, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, I I don't know, are you, let's see. Um, Who do I, uh, oh, sorry, there it is. Okay, I, so I just said show my screen, so you hopefully can see my screen. There we go. Yep, we can see it. Okay. Um, little green light pricing is based on the number of constituent records you have in your account. Uh, again, a constituent is any individual or organization record. Uh, it starts, uh, the opening tier covers up to 2,500 constituent records. Uh, about half of our customers are in this opening tier. Uh, the, the fee is $39 per month, or if you pay annually, there's a 10% discount, which works out to $421 for the year. Uh, and then pricing goes up in $10 increments, but the number of records doubles until you get to 10,000. And then each extra 10,000 is another $10 a month. Uh, so if you're at 20,000 records, it, it works up to $69 per month or $745 for the year. And then you can keep going from there. Um, it goes, you know, we show pricing up to 100,000. Our largest customer has about 150,000 records. Not many of our customers have that many. I mean, <laughs> very few have that many, but um, you can see the pricing there. The only other thing that Little Green Light charges for is if you use our forms for donation processing or event registrations where people are paying. If you use us for processing payments, uh, you have to pay the, the payment processor. Uh, we're integrated with Stripe, PayPal, and ProPay. Uh, they each have nonprofit rates that are typically in the 2.2% plus 30 cents range. And then Little Green Light adds a 1% fee uh, that's charged separately. Um, our fee is capped at $50 in a month. So if you have a month with a big event and you do over $5,000 worth of total transaction volume, uh, our fee stops at that point because 1% of $5,000 is $50. And in a given month, uh, we cap our fee at that point for the forms part of it. Uh, the fee to the payment processor continues. That We, we, we can't control that. But... Um, those are the two fees we have, is the, the base subscription fee and then the payment or the forms fee for using it for payment processing. Uh, next question, how long does it take landscape converting from donor perfect to LGL to settle in? Okay, um, we're quite familiar with this in terms of people migrating into Little Green Light and how long that takes. Um, I can't really speak specifically to the customers who have landscape and whether that changes that time frame. But in terms of migrating data, um, I would allow four weeks to go through the process of understanding how Little Green Light works, reflecting on your data, iterating on your data, preparing it for import, getting it into Little Green Light and feeling comfortable that it got into the right places, and then you're starting to use Little Green Light. I, I would allow four weeks for that. Uh, that assumes that you are making it a fairly high priority project and not ignoring it, of course. <laughs> um, there are consultants, by the way, who specialize in helping organizations move into Little Green Light. Uh, they provide a lot of hand or personalized um, consulting service and they can really speed up your learning curve. Uh, Little Green Light provides great 
direct support, uh, but our support is more in terms of answering questions that you have, not taking you by the hand and kind of guiding you through the whole process. So hiring a consultant can definitely speed up that process. Um, at the end of that four week period, you will not yet feel proficient in Little Green Light. Uh, we do think that the software is pretty intuitive and things are kind of where you'd expect them to be, especially coming from another donor management system, you'll feel pretty comfortable with uh, kind of how we track data and manage data. Uh, but there's a lot to learn and you know that process will continue. Um, we always recommend focusing on the most important core uh, aspects that you need on a day-to-day -day basis. And then as you get comfortable with that, you'll be expanding into other areas. So adding a donation form, an event registration form, those may come you know a little bit farther into that first year. Uh, as far as the most challenging implementation points, generally, I, I, I think it has to do with uh, kind of matching up how you currently store your data with how it's best to store that data in Little Green Light. Again, coming from another donor management system gives you a, a definite leg up because most donor management systems have pretty good similarity in terms of the types of things they track. But the way we uh, think about campaigns, funds, events, appeals, maybe slightly different. So um, kind of that iterative process where you understand how Little Green Light thinks about storing data and how your current data is organized, you know, that, that process uh, can be uh, a challenge just depending on what kind of shape your current data is in. We do have a very extensive knowledge base uh, publicly available. You do not need a Little Greenlight account to, to go here. If you go to help.littlegreenlight.com, uh, Timmy mentioned the video library. That's part of our public knowledge base. And you can come here. Um, there are some videos about importing data. So that could be a place to start. Uh, we also have a whole knowledge base section about importing data. And I recommend these first three articles. They will give you a really good handle on what's involved in using our Flex Importer for importing data into Little Green Light. The Data Dictionary gives you a complete list of every field in your Little Green Light account. Uh, and if you use that in your spreadsheet, it'll really speed up your process because we'll recognize those field names and it'll make it go quite, quite quickly. Uh, thank you, Rebecca. I appreciate your testimonial there. Thank you. Um, our support, um, we do all our support through email. Um, if you're in a little green light account, you will see a help link in the upper right corner. And on that help page is a form where you can submit a question to our support team. Uh, we will get back to you within an hour, almost all the time, often quite a bit faster than an hour. Um, so hopefully it won't interrupt your productivity. And uh, it works best if you've tried something and you've run into an issue and then, or a question, and ask us that specific question or tell us about that issue. And then we can help you over that. Um, that works really well and uh, then we can help you be productive. All right, we've reached the end of the hour. Um, I will wait one minute if, for any last questions, but otherwise, thank you all for joining. Really appreciate you taking the time to learn about landscape and Little Green Light and how they integrate. And thank you, Caleb, really appreciate your the work you've put in, you've done a great job in integrating the two. Uh, that's a very nice, nice thing to see. Thanks, Hunter. And thanks to everybody for joining today. Great. All right. You'll get an email with the link to the uh, recording once that's out. All right. Thanks, all. Take care. Bye. Bye.